be or not okay um I just wanted to say thank you so much for being patient as I am trying to get those driver appreciation packages out to you I've got over 600 packages that I'm doing some of you have um, received them and some of you are still waiting but they are coming also to the winners of the drawing we did last month, you're still going to get your stuff. I just have to ship it out all at once instead of shipping lots of things out at different times. So um, that's just my little spiel here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our guest. We have Sarah Hogan with us. She's our customer service representative, and um, I'm so excited to have her today. So let me flip this over. And All right, Sarah. Thanks, Riley. So I'm Sarah Hogan. Um, I'm the CSR lead in Joplin, uh, over nine CSRs. Um, I have been doing this business for 11 years. I've got 17 years in specialized trucking. Um, so I was just gonna talk a little bit about um, things that happen at customer sites that you should probably call us about. Um, late pickups and deliveries. Uh, I also do all of the customs work for loads that cross anywhere other than Champlain, New York. So I was going to talk a little bit about um, paperwork and things that happen with customs crossings. Um, so you are the face of our company and at customer sites and we count on you um, to be our representative with the customer on site. I know that things happen that are beyond your control. Uh, we never want to make you the middleman. If things like overweight issues, um, improper loading, improper securement, big things happen at a customer, we want you to call in to your driver manager and let them know so we can get involved uh, Customer service reps have spent years developing relationships with our customers and we want to put those to use. We need to help you do your job. Um, if there's changes of destination on your paperwork, we need to know about that. If you're waiting longer than two hours at a shipper or a consignee, we need to know about that. Your time is worth something, and we're gonna make them pay for your time if, if it takes all day to load you. Um, late pickups and deliveries, if you, I know that we plan freight tight around here. Um, if there is any inclination that you're gonna be late for a pickup or deli delivery, we need to know about that. We need a call about that. Um, we want to make sure we notify the customer before they call us because their truck didn't show up as scheduled. Um, it always works out better if we can let them know first instead of them letting us know first. Before I get into the customs, do you have any questions? Um, not yet, just okay. a lot of hellos. <laughs> hellos. Okay, customs, border crossings. Um, Currently, Ken Fails does all of the customs work for any load that crosses at Champlain, New York. Most of you already know that. Um, you've stopped, talked to him, picked up packets, all that kind of thing. Um, every other border crossing is done by me at the moment. Uh, we're trying to get some other people trained, uh, so this large job isn't on one person. Um, we do everything that we can as customer service to get a copy of the original bills and invoices that we need uh, for the broker directly from the customer. Um, it's rare that we would ask you to drive Axel in that paperwork. What usually happens is once you take a picture of the paperwork and drive Axel it in and then we are faxing or emailing a second or third copy of that, the, the contents on the paperwork gets distorted. So it always works out better if we can have an original uh, straight from the customer. PARS and PAP stickers. Um, I know some of you do have PARS and PAP stickers. Please don't put the stickers on the paperwork. 
if you do put stickers on the paperwork, we're going to put a new sticker over it. So we had ran into some issues uh, where PARS and PAPS numbers had been used more than once and it was causing big problems at the border crossings because the drivers couldn't get over. Um, if we have you drive axle paperwork in and you've put a sticker on it, we're going to have you peel it off because we're going to use a different sticker. Um, if you have a problem at a customs border crossing, you need to call in right away. Driver manager, call me, call Ken, call somebody. Um, we are only one part of the customs crossing process. The other part is the broker and the broker has to do their job. And sometimes the broker doesn't do their job in a timely fashion. So they need a little nudge, but I can promise you if you have problems at the border, it's going to take a minimum 45 minutes to correct. So call in right away. Let's get started on it and get it fixed. Um, I am actually working on a customs border crossing cheat sheet for drivers. Um, it should, it'll list every kind of crossing from a regular ACI e-manifest entry into Canada to a uh, in-transit manifest going to Alaska, um, all of it. You'll know what forms you need, the proper way to fill them out. You'll, need, you'll know if you need something from the office. Um, so I hope to get that done soon and that way your driver managers can distribute to you. So you'll have some point of reference, some forms, and some examples for, for you if you have to cross the border. Um, the last thing really is on customs, every time we process either an ACI or an ACE, um, once the broker does their paperwork process, a transaction number or an entry number will be issued that is attached to your ACE, ACI or ACE manifest. Um, the driver managers should know how to look that up. If they don't, I can show them. Um, but you shouldn't be approaching a border crossing without a transaction number or an entry number. Those two things show the Canadian Customs Officer that all of the paperwork has been processed properly and everything's in order for you to cross. I promise if you will wait until we have a transaction number or an entry number, it will save you a lot of heartache at the border crossing. Before I go on to location codes, we've got we have <laughs> one question. It says, can we get EFS set up for QT fuel? I have no idea because that's not anything to that's do with That's not with, with me. yours, okay. Uh -uh. Well, we'll get that answered at some point, guys. Sorry. Okay. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about was location codes. Um, I know that almost every Facebook Live, somebody has talked about location codes. It is a process. There are over 5,000 location codes in the system. Um, your um, macro seven has been altered um, to with those questions at the bottom. Uh, and one of them was, were the directions correct? When you send those in, they are emailed directly to the CSR leads, me here in Joplin and Danny in Phoenix. and. For me, if you put a comment, good directions, good phone numbers, anything like that, I can immediately update that location code. Um, if there's too much to fit in the space, call me. I'm here from eight to five and I will correct the location code with you on the phone. Um, I like having comments in that section so everything can be updated immediately. And I think that's all I have today. All right. Um, thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us today. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching. If you didn't join on at the beginning, you will be able to go back and watch this. But make sure you're stopped um, before you watch. And we'll see you next week.